Welcome to Inside the Stripes, and thanks for joining us. I'm Bree Andrews. She's Aria Pons, and Aria, it was a lot of stuff that went down for LSU Sports this weekend. Another packed weekend. It certainly was a very eventful weekend. Let's hop right into it. The LSU Beach Volleyball team hosted a seven-team invitational Saturday and Sunday, finishing the weekend with a 3-2 record. The sixth-ranked Tigers swept Tampa and Louisiana Monroe to start off the competition. Saturday night, number four Florida State defeated LSU 3-2. The Tigers lost another match to number two TCU Sunday morning before defeating Houston Baptist to wrap up the Invitational. Despite the losses, the team is not discouraged by their performance. Like we're talking about how are we playing, like how are we supporting each other, how are we um, as a team, are we invested, are we giving effort, are we executing um, with discipline. So, you know, those, that's our report card. You can't win every match, but you can be successful every match. The Tigers will travel to California for the UCL Invitational this weekend. Speaking of the beach volleyball team, one pair may be new to the program, but they are spiking it with the best of them. Sports reporter Bertie O'Connell joins us in studio with more. Bertie? Thanks, guys. This LSU beach volleyball pair has a patient yet playful relationship, even though they are new to the program. LSU beach volleyball players Parker Bracken and Kylie DeBerg both stepped on the Tiger sand for the first time this year. The only difference is Bracken is a freshman and DeBerg is a graduate transfer from the University of Missouri. It's been an interesting journey. Um, I'm still like learning as we play games and like go play other people and everything, but it's been a fun journey to like just see where I started at. Bracken and DeBerg teach each other patience. When they view the game as fun, they tend to perform better and their mutual patience allows them to not crack under pressure during a match. Bracken also speaks on DeBerg's blocking abilities. Because I'm most likely going to get served in the game, so I have to side out and do all that. So she helps me like calm down, especially if we're in a big game. They never expected to be a pair together. DeBerg has enjoyed playing with Bracken. She says Bracken has a humorous side and she makes it known on the court. Bracken is fast and ready to go get it no matter what. She's a really funny person. Um, like whenever she dies for a ball or anything, she just makes like the randomest noises. And like I can just count on her that she'll get that ball no matter like where it's at. Bracken and DeBerg's strongest skill is communication. They do this through body gestures and eye contact during the set. They are continuing to work on gaining more experience playing on the sand together. DeBerg, Bracken, and the rest of the Lady Tigers will look to build off Sunday's win this weekend at the UCLA Invitational. For Tiger TV Sports, I'm Bertie O'Connell. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Bertie. Going from the sand to the diamond, the LSU softball team hit the road to face Arkansas. Game one was a close one with the Lady Razorbacks stopping at LSU's comeback win 8-7. to seven. The Lady Tigers then tied the series on Sunday with Allie Newland and Georgia Clark driving in all seven runs for the team. The series will be sided in game three, which first pitch is set for 6 p.m. tonight. Going from Fayetteville to Gainesville, the Tiger baseball team took on the Florida Gators in hopes of winning their first SEC series of the season. Florida took the series lead first, winning the Friday night matchup. LSU then went on to tie it up after winning the Saturday game before ultimately clinching the series with an 11-2 win on Sunday. The purple and gold are now ranked number 13 in the latest polls. They will be back in the box Tuesday night to face ULM. Switching gears a bit, the LSU men's basketball program enters a new era after the hiring of head coach Matt McMahon. The 2021-22 OVC Coach of the Year has a track record that could lead to success for the team. Sports reporter Chris Langley has the story. After the firing of Will Wade, LSU hired Matt McMahon to be its next men's basketball head coach. The 43-year-old coached the last seven seasons at Murray State, winning 70% of his games. Coaching future NBA players like all-star guard John Morant, McMahon led the Racers to multiple first-place finishes in the OVC and three NCAA tournament appearances. During the 2021 season, the Racers won 21 straight before losing to St. Peter's in the second round. Two days after the loss, McMahon arrived at LSU. This is an unbelievable honor uh, to have the privilege to stand here today as the head basketball coach at LSU. On the court, McMahon instills a philosophy of balance, believing his team must play on both ends. 
During the season, Murray State ranked nationally in the top 20 for both offensive and defensive efficiency. In comparison, LSU ranked 4th defensively and 176 offensively. He also highlights inefficient offense and a physical defense, a play style that allows his players to develop for a pro career. We're going to play an up-tempo style, but we're going to be efficient with it offensively. We're going to be aggressive and physical and tough on the defensive end of the floor. And we're going to play, play a style that enables elite players to come here and develop into NBA players. But heading into his first season, uncertainty looms over the program. LSU potentially faces NCAA imposed sanctions following the investigation into former coach Will Wade. However, McMahon doesn't plan to let it affect his preparation, stating he's ready to get to work. We get back in the gym starting on Monday. And we're going to start establishing the culture of what LSU basketball is going to be moving forward. Chris Langley, Tiger TV Sports. As the team gets ready for the next season, they already have players on the move. Guards Brandon Murray and Xavier Pinson each entered the transfer portal, and forward Tari Eason declared for the NBA draft. On from the court to the gridiron, LSU football has officially begun spring practice, and there's competition all over the field, and everyone is fighting for a starting spot. We'll see what position is up for grabs after the break. Don't go anywhere. Good evening and welcome to the fifth quarter. I'm Bree Anders and she's Aria Pons. And Aria, this week the Tigers headed to Ole Miss and it wasn't the same Tiger team that we saw against Florida, but they did start off strong in the first drive, but we just didn't see that same energy going into the rest of the game. How did you see it? You were in Oxford in the student section. What did you see from the Tigers? Bree, the LSU fans were crazy as always. They were super pumped about the 7-0 lead and after that the football team just plummeted a bit. They did not have a fire, the fire within them lit on offense or defense, and we saw it. I think the biggest problem with this team is definitely consistency. We saw a very, very powerful team against Florida, and then the team was not as strong against Ole Miss. So I think that's the biggest thing they need to work on going forward. But following the Tigers' 321-yard performance against Florida, many LSU fans expected another strong rushing attack in Oxford. The Ole Miss defense, however, had other plans. Sports reporter Adam Gattuso has the story. Only seven days after one of the most dominant rushing performances in school history, LSU was unable to gain any momentum on the ground against Ole Miss. The Tigers' run game was stagnant in Oxford. The team finished the game with a total of 77 rushing yards. The lack of offensive production put LSU in a hole, leaving the team no choice but to abandon the run game. I think that we didn't have the success to big runs. and We just got behind on the change a little bit. We tried to throw the football, and plus we got behind. At the first first quarter, we were just taking our time, wanted to keep the ball away from them. I thought we did a good job of that, but then we couldn't capitalize when we needed to. The ground attack against the Rebels was a stark contrast to the Tigers' 321-yard performance a week prior versus Florida. Running back Ty Davis-Price led the team with just 53 yards against Ole Miss. The longest run of the night was a carry of only 12 yards by freshman running back Corey Kiner. The inability to run the football was a key factor in the outcome of the game. We ran the ball for 77, they ran for 266. I think that's the story of the game. The Tigers now sit at 4-4 four and four on the season. LSU will have a week off to fix their mistakes before traveling to Tuscaloosa to face the Alabama Crimson Tide. For Tiger TV Sports, I'm Adam Gattuso. It was announced earlier today by Coach Ogeron that offensive lineman Anthony Bradford will miss the remainder of the season due to injury. This news is yet the latest obstacle the offense will have to overcome heading into the bye week. Saturday's matchup versus Ole Miss was not the only thing on fans' minds. Just last weekend, it was announced that the LSU football program and head coach Ed Orgeron would part ways following the 2021 football season. The news comes just two seasons after the Tigers won the national championship. The announcement was met with mixed reaction from LSU fans. While in Oxford on Saturday, traveling LSU fans shared their reactions to the news. Personally, I, I understand that our play these past two years is not up to par for what LSU thinks, so I, I get why I fired him. I personally like Coach O, though. I mean, I wish we would have kept him. I was expecting it to happen, but I was very disappointed. I don't want him to go. I don't want to see him go. I understand that the expectations at LSU are high. However, I think we could have given him more time. Fans also shared their guesses on who might be the next coach of the Tigers. 
Guesses included Clemson's Dabo Sweeney, former defensive coordinator Dave Aranda, and Pittsburgh Steelers head coach Mike Tomlin. Now onto the court, the LSU men's hoops has high expectations for the season, which seem to be met in their exhibition game on Saturday. However, this game was played for something bigger than basketball. Sports reporter Braxton Lee has the story. LSU men's basketball traveled to Nickel State for an exhibition game to support victims of Hurricane Ida. The hurricane left the city of Thibodeau in shock, so Nickel State head coach Austin Clonch was overjoyed when he got the call to play against the Tigers. For this community, uh, for those guys to come down here, you know, Will called us a little while back to kind of set this up, and you saw the atmosphere. It was so much fun today to compete against those guys and have these people feel stoked um, you know, and again, great, great to get your first finish against a really good team in LSU. You know, a team I think is going to make the NCAA tournament and make a little run. The Tigers started out strong against a very scrappy Colonels team with a couple of threes from Tari Eason, who led all scores with 22 points. But Nickel State came firing back with a trifecta of threes from Pierce Spencer and one from Ty Gordon, which put the Colonels up by four at the end of the first half. This momentum would carry over as Nickel State started the second half on an 11-3 run. But after a stint of defensive stops, the Tigers began to claw their way ahead. Eric Gaines led LSU with nine assists and Easton leading with 15 rebounds, helping the Tigers surge to a 74-62 win over the Colonels. The Tigers open their season on November 9th as they take on the University of Louisiana Monroe at the PMAC. For Tiger TV Sports, I'm Braxton Lee. All the proceeds from the game will be donated to my hometown of Thibodeau as we continue to recover from Hurricane Ida. Switching from one court to the next, the LSU volleyball team looked to build off their win versus South Carolina when they took on number 20, Tennessee Volunteers. In the first match of the doubleheader, Tennessee got off to a strong start, winning the first set 25-23. to The Lady Tigers would later tie the game at two apiece, heading into the fifth set. However, LSU was unable to close out the game as the Lady Volunteers would win the final set in the 3-2 victory. Both teams then returned to the PMAC Sunday to conclude the doubleheader. In this match, it was the Lady Tigers who would take the first set 25-20. LSU would win the next, set, the next two sets, sweeping Tennessee 3-0. The win marked the Lady Tigers' first sweep over a top 25 team since 2009. The Lady Tigers now sit at 9-12 and 12 on the season, and they'll travel to Auburn on Friday night at 7 p.m. When we come back, see how many LSU athletes help their young fans celebrate Halloween. Good evening and welcome to Inside the Stripes and thanks for joining us. I'm Bree Andrus, she's Aria Pond, and Aria, it was once again an eventful weekend for LSU Athletics. Bree, it absolutely was. And with other sports such as baseball and softball beginning soon, it's shaping to be a very exciting time for Tiger fans. But for now, let's hop right into what went down this weekend. Starting off in the PMAC, the LSU women's return home Sunday to face unranked Kentucky after the Lady Tigers' ugly loss to the Razorbacks. Sports reporter Jamil Johnson has the story. LSU women's basketball added another win to their record as they defeated Kentucky 78-69. Coming off two back-to-back -back road losses, the Tigers were able to turn it around at home. Head coach Kim Mulkey was very pleased with the team's response against the Wildcats. We went to Florida, we battled, we, we come up short. We go to Arkansas, we battled, we didn't play. You give credit to Arkansas, let's go back home and just keep doing what you've been doing. Just keep doing what you've been doing and just be a little bit tougher. Guard Kayla Pointer had a high of 28 points, followed by Alexis Morris with 20. During the game, Kayla Pointer was also recognized for being the first LSU Tiger to have 1,500 points, 500 rebounds, and 500 assists. But I was able to make some you know, tough shots um, for the team and I'm happy we was able to you know, win that stretch and pull out the game. The Tigers were able to capitalize off crashing the boards and getting some second chance opportunities. Guard Jalen Cherry also had three steals and 11 points, adding to the Tigers' success. With this win against Kentucky, the Tigers now have 18 wins this season, which is double what they had last season. The last time the Lady Tigers won this many games was the 2019-2020 season. Trying to win ball games because we want to do something that hasn't been done here in a few years. LSU will travel to Oxford to take on Ole Miss February 7th. For Tiger TV Sports, I'm Janelle Johnson. With the win, the Lady Tigers now have twice as many victories compared to last season. However, they fell three spots to number 15 in the AP rankings, which were released earlier today. 
Going from the PMAC to Alec Box Stadium, the LSU baseball team held its first practice as the season opener looms in the near future. Sports reporter Kaylee Rome is at Alec Box Stadium with more. Kaylee? Thanks, guys. With offseason coming to a close and baseball season coming in full swing, the Tigers are looking to be what might be a very successful season. Baseball is coming into full swing this spring, beginning with open practice. With the large and versatile roster, Coach Jay Johnson plans to use anyone who is ready. And then it's inevitable over a you know 56 to 70 game college baseball season, you're going to find the right combination uh, the longer that you go. And when you have a team like ours with some depth, um, you know, it may not look the same, you know, in game 10 as game one, and that's okay. Coaches and players touched on the work they have been putting in during the off season. The second that I went home, I took uh, a straight picture of the mirror, my shirt off. And then uh, I told myself, I said, I'm not going to look the same whenever I get back. And I did. And uh, yeah, no, I just, I'm down almost 40 pounds. I went from 272 to 235. With opening weekend right around the corner, the Tigers feel ready to do what's needed to get to Omaha. For Tiger TV Sports, I'm Kaylee Rohn. The Tigers will open up their season right here in Alex Box on February 18th against the Maine Black Bears. For Tiger TV Sports, I'm Kaylee Rome. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Kaylee. Returning to the basketball court, the men's team traveled to Fort Worth, Texas over the weekend to face TCU in the SEC Big 12 Challenge. TCU outshot LSU, shooting 49.1% to their 36.9, even with the return of Xavier Pinson and Darius Days. With the Tigers falling short to the Horn Frogs 77-68, Coach Wade believes the team will have to play smarter in their next game if they want to win. Um, so we're going to have to be on point against uh, against a variety of different different defensive looks. Be a, uh, be another challenge for us here in SEC play. The Tigers dropped to number 25 in the AP poll, and they will return to the PMAC tomorrow to face SEC rival Ole Miss. After the break, learn how the Tiger Girls returned to the national stage, started a viral trend. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Coming up, the LSU gymnastics team bounced around, quite literally in fact, hear about their eventful weekend after the break. After the break, find out how the offense is preparing for tonight's game after a successful yet out of sync performance against McNeese State. Stay tuned, the Tiger TV game day show will be right back. Back on the subject of baseball, fans at the box Friday night got to watch as the program was thrown into the Jay Johnson era. See how when we return. Stay tuned. While the football teams continue to prepare for next season, another LSU team is preparing for its next postseason matchup. See which team is hoping to make it rather than break it in the NCAA regionals after the break. Stay tuned. Today on Inside the Stripes, the LSU Beach Volleyball team returned home to face five opponents in the Beach Invitational. Plus, a new coach is in town. Hear what new men's basketball coach Matt McMahon plans to bring to the program. And later, spring football is here. See which position battle will have Tiger fans watching. All that and more Inside the Stripes starts right now. Stripes March Madness is here. Hear how both teams on men's and women's performed in the opening round of the NCAA tournament. Plus, the LSU baseball team has officially swung into SEC play for the season as they hosted Texas A&M for a weekend series at the box. And later, the gymnastics team vaulted into the postseason to compete in the SEC championships. All that and more Inside the Stripes starts right now. 